Hi and welcome to Exploring Jeeps. Uh, today we're off-roading again. Uh, second day in a row. We're up here in Ontario. Uh, north west of Ottawa. Having a lot of fun. Just aired down and uh, yesterday we, we made the choice not to air down and today um, I've made the choice that I am going to air down and the question is What's the difference? Uh, real world uh, example, same path, same same everything, just one uh, having aired down and one not. Uh, I want to feel the difference between uh, the track, what what the, how the tires feel, comfort, and then also uh, you know traction. Uh, there were a couple of places where you know I had to put it in a four wheel drive. I'm curious if today I can even do it everything in in two wheel drive. Um, and I'm going to try a couple harder things in in four wheel low, and you know I'm hoping to get even better results with with you know lowering the tire pressure. The way I do it, I don't use a gauge um, as I'm going. I have a gauge on my instrument cluster that I can I can read the pressure of the tires, and it seems to be very very accurate. The way I do it though is one I have all four tires set to the same pressure to begin with. And then I use a key that's uh, in the ignition right now, or I'd show it to you. It's a, it's a, it's a brass, soft brass key. That's it's smooth. It's it's rounded. It's it fits perfectly in there. I'm able to release pressure as fast as I can with with just depressing on the little needle, on the on the tire um, inflation valve. And what I do is I time it. Okay, so I, I I'll do it in 15 second increments. Um, or 30 second in increments if I know I'm, I'm dropping below that or dropping lower with the tire pressure So what I did this time is I went from 37 psi, which is you know the standard for um, Tire pressure rating from Jeep for the Rubicon um, with the BFG mud terrains on them um, And now if I look at my um, um, after one minute, they're at 24 psi. So they went from 37 to 24 psi. So um, I'm probably going to drop these another 30 seconds and just go around. But they all come out about the same. So you don't have to go with the tire gauge and make sure, like, if it's 8 or 10 or 12 or 15 or whatever you choose to have your 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 tires at. I think it's less important whether it's 10 or 9 or or 11 or 12 it's more important that they're all the same and if you time it right um, you should be able to get similar results at least in the front and in the back if you're on a level level area when you do it so um, I'm gonna go fix this get a, get a little bit lower and then we're gonna head out on the trail okay so I'm back um, put another 30 seconds in the um, remove 30 seconds worth of air from the tires uh, important thing to note is that if you're gonna do this uh, you either better have a service station right near the trail or you better have your own way to um, you uh, refill them so uh, where I'm at I have a compressor and if I didn't I'd be in trouble because I have a lot of highway driving to get back to a town where there's a, a service station um, so it's an important consideration if you don't have air um, you know and and you have a long way to travel you're probably gonna have to go with the tire pressure that's recommended or that that you choose to go with um, you know all the time I'm sitting at about 17 for a tire pressure right now there's a lot of people who will go uh, much much lower than that especially if they have bead locks that hold the bead on so one of the problems that you run into is if you if you go too low on the um, um, if you go if you go too low on your tire pressure what will happen is the um, you know you can break a bead so your, your tires held on by the air pressure inside and there's a you know your rim is on the outside of the t uh, the metal rim is on the outside of the tire and the, the tire kind of sits inside that well if you go too low and then maybe in the fronts you're turning or something like that you can force 
a break between the bead and the and the tire and then you'll lose all the air pressure inside and um, you have to reset that bead and that can be that can be kind of hard if you don't have a like a large tank a co2 tank or a very good fast high-speed compressor I don't have one of those um, so I really don't want to break a bead on the trail definitely airing down is better uh, you have greater traction you know as the the tire is able to to flex on the road better and and your your contact patch is much larger um, also I've heard that it's it's also better um, as you go over sharp objects your tire is more able to to bend and not and not get cut or, or punctured by those I'd have to say I mean if you really think about the physics of that that it's probably a draw 50 50 I mean I think as you as you air down your sidewalls come out there's more flex in your sidewalls and I think that leads to potentially more punctures to the sidewalls you know I don't know everybody says it's better I'll I'm, I'm not sure I, I totally believe that I think you you know you're you're deforming it and and, and causing um, greater greater chance of getting your sidewalls um, cut through going over sharp rocks or, or sharp puncture uh, puncturing type sticks or, or or something like that uh, so we're ready to go we're gonna start driving and I will let you know how it feels once once we're done Uh, driving impressions better um, definitely not feeling every every little rock and bump and uh, like the washboard undulations of the road you can definitely still feel it I mean they're there they're just not as bad more comfortable driving experience and I'm sure going a little bit further lower uh, would be would be even better so when you're done four-wheeling uh, you're gonna have to air back up so you're gonna want to get your compressor out and uh, and and get it back to the the factory settings for your for your air pressure. Look on the door jam, the door sill for the uh, recommended settings. My air compressor. Um, with hose, keep it in this little bag I got from Jeep. For most uh, kind of bargain compressors, you're gonna you're gonna have this this type of setup where you connect the positive to the positive terminal of the battery, the the negative to a, a good ground, um, not paint, uh, but a metal ground. Okay, so the way you, the way you want to do this is you hook up the the leads, uh, like I showed in the other part, um, and then before you connect the tire. You want to make sure you turn the pump on, at least with this pump from uh, Harbor Freight. At this point, you're going to want to uh, air up for about as much time as um, you you were airing down so you know a minute and 30 seconds to air down you know with this type of pump you know around about the same amount of time um, 
you you do want to be careful once you're done because the, the pump gets very very hot you don't want to put it right into the bag let it cool down first um, I do recommend a bag though because it can get pretty muddy um, and you're going to be putting it back into your Jeep so thanks for watching